Hello and welcome. You're watching the Dove Jewish News Channel. My name is Michael Vilensky, and my guest today is Professor David Pesig, professor in the Barilan University. David, welcome to our studio. Thank you. David, you are a specialist in the field of AI and in everything related to our scary future. And also, you are a religious person. And I want to ask you, how do these two combine? So, what I mean is, many people see AI as a danger for to our existence and to the way we live our lives. And especially, many religious people are opposed to the development of AI. Of AI. So, the connection of religion and AI raises many questions. For example, is AI a, a soul and should be given rights in the religious sense? And if man created the AI, as AI is man-made, so did man become God? How do these two things work together? Well, these are, you know, a series of questions. I need to, you know, dissect all those uh, assumptions and try to explain something very fundamental. You see, as a species, we do not accept our existence and its constraints as it is, okay? Uh, from a Jewish point of view, for example, uh, one of the most uh, important tenets in, 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 the, in Jewish thought is uh, that in the future there won't be death anymore. It's called Tchiyat Amitim, which means that as, as a, a very conscious and, uh, um, let's say, uh, intellectual uh, being on earth, we strive constantly to break our constraints, to break our envelope, and we have been doing it for millennia. At the beginning, for example, we did not accept that we are able to, to, you know, to walk four kilometers an hour. And then we have invented the wheel in order to walk much, much faster. At the end, we, we, we even you know, invented the wings with which we are flying from place to place. In the, net, in the 20th century, we did an amazing breakthrough, which is we were able to push the envelope of our uh, cognitive abilities, which means we have developed tools uh, w w that are able to, uh, you know, contain um, huge amounts of uh, of data that our mind cannot even, you know, try even to remember. And then we were trying to develop uh, tools with which we were able to analyze uh, huge amounts of, of data. And we are at the stage in which we are just trying to mimic our ability to think. That's it. That's AI. It's another tool that pushes the envelope of our cognitive abilities. But these are not the most important characteristic of us as a species. The most important characteristic is our consciousness, which means that when I know something, I know that I know something, which is something unusual. There is no such an animal on, on Earth that, as far as we know, that is able to, uh, to know that it knows and in knowing that it doesn't know, et cetera, et cetera, or knowing uh, the validity of our knowledge. This is something really very unique to us. And we are just at the verge of, 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 uh, uh, of uh, starting to explore that abilities to mimic it in our technologies. So in any way, you know, thinking about AI as something which is unusual, from my point of view, this is just another stage in which uh, we another stage in a very long journey for many, many millennia in which we are constantly trying to enhance our abilities, physical abilities, cognitive uh, capabilities, but we are just at the very beginning of our existence on, 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 on this earth. And by all means, if you take a look just from a, you know, a, a religious point of view, what we are just a few millennia here. Even if you take a look at our species from a, a scientific point of view, nonetheless, we are just a few uh, 10,000 years. The Homo sapiens is around something like two, 250,000 years. 
in by all means this is just the beginning of this species and being afraid this is something which is good you know Shlomo Amelech already said Ashreya ish mefachet tamid and the, the, the person that is constantly you know in fear that's something which is uh, generally speaking a good thing that way you are much careful that way you look at the, you know the, the positive aspects of any development and you try to avoid the negative aspects so for, at least from my, my point of view this is exactly what the bible is speaking that this species is we are just you know a little bit less than than god and we have you know a very long route to even try to achieve that you know that closeness to uh, to uh, the deity so if i understood you correctly you said that what defines and makes humans unique from and you know different from animals is our cognitive ability which makes us understand that we understand no, that's not a cognitive ability that's not a cognitive ability this is consciousness consciousness okay? exactly cognitive abilities that's cognition this these are two different things okay that the ability to be aware of yourself let's say for example a kid of one year old a couple of years old doesn't know that he's a kid or she is a kid okay we start being aware even or, uh, on, uh, about our uh, gender only later in, in our life. So, David, we are evolving. I just wanted to ask my, my question, right? I want to get, to get to the point, to make sure if I understood okay. you correctly. The, so, if AI, does AI have this capacity? And if it does, does it make AI human in some sense? No, we are very far from really mimicking our ability to think uh, in, in a way that is, you know, a, a, a valid, uh, smart way of thinking. We are just now statistically trying to mi mimic our ability to speak or to uh, uh, draft uh, sentences. This is not real. Uh, intelligence intelligence is something very different by the way by definition uh, one of the definitions is that uh, that intelligence is the ability to perceive uh, patterns in, uh, in, in that are all around us and validate those patterns be it you know economic patterns to uh, um, scientific patterns to uh, social patterns it doesn't matter our ability to perceive pattern and validate those patterns is an intellectual issue. We are still in AI very far even to achieve that thing. Uh, David, as a person who understands the future, every development in our, you know, in our surroundings as human beings also influenced our, us our bodies and our evolution as a species, right? So for example, uh, the fact that we had to think uh, how to survive made us have bigger brains and this is how we developed as a species or the fact that we ate the meat made us develop specific teeth that were good for eating meat how will the development of ai uh, you know influence us as a species will our brain get smaller because we don't need to think as much because we always have ai what will be the process there we have to be very careful very very careful not to watch a lot of science fiction movies on those movies you know people tend to to go wild about different directions you know our tools have a great effect on each one of us at this very moment we are speaking from afar it has a great effect on on my ability even to understand myself just take for example that as at this very moment i see myself speak this is something unusual, you know, I, and I see things that you, I don't want it to be, you know, to, to be seen on, on, on TV or, or, or in, on any platform. So just by developing a tool that we are able to speak with each other and see ourselves speak with each other, this is an amazing thing. And we are able to see ourselves speaking during our speech, which is by itself has a great 
effect on my ability to understand myself. The same thing with, you know, just inventing a hammer. That, that gives us a, a different aspect of our physical abilities. And just think about the mirror. The first time people, you know, invented a mirror and, and, and watched their face on a very clear mirror. We are constantly being affected by the technologies, the tools we are developing. Take another example, you know, our cell phones. We are able now to speak from one corner of the world to another corner of the world in, a in, in, in fractions of seconds. This is something which means that we are developing our really uh, oral and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, our senses are becoming very different than we used to be and, and, and perceive them for millennia. So it any tool that we are developing has a great effect. It is at the beginning of every tool, you know, a lot of people are very much afraid. Think about the wheel, the first people that invented the wheel. I can just imagine that they were so frightened that that wheel will you know, break their bones uh, every time they'll be on that. Office. Or think about the time that we have just discovered how to move to move from one place to another place, a flame, okay, of fire. How devastating probably it was to a lot of people just perceiving that we are able, you know, to, to have in our hands something that it can be so devastating. The same thing with nuclear power. Everything we are developing at the very beginning, <clears throat> we are very afraid of our, you know, achievement. Step by step, bit by bit, we understand uh, its potential and we understand better its, you know, uh, uh, negative uh, outcomes. And then and we are, you know, maneuvering between those two uh, uh, opposite sides. And But generally speaking, we are constantly developing and, 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 and making our surrounding much better, much comfortable much smarter, et cetera, et cetera. Just think about the next stage in which our things are going to start thinking for us, which we call at the moment IOTs. So uh, my, my table will be, you know, interacting with me. People will be shocked that their surrounding uh, are, are, are becoming much, much more smarter, not just, you know, a computer that can mimic the way I speak, which is you know, nothing. So I'm not afraid. I see the development of humankind as something that is infinite in the future. And we are just at the very early stages of our evolution. Uh, David, for the end of our interview, I want to get uh, from what we're talking about what happened with the development of AI. And I want to go to the future, right? Because people call you a futurist. I want to talk about the future. What will come? after AI? What will be the next development? What will be people shocked at, you know, after, a, 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 as the next innovation? Well, the, the next innovation, which is already in the making, but it's not, you know, so widely spread all over, is what we call Internet of Things. In the last 50 years, we have developed tools we call computers, and we were able to connect those computers all together and develop something something huge that is called the internet but this is not this is not it now we are starting to connect our things together um, we are starting to connect the table with the window and the window with the, uh, the, the the door steps everything will be connected and everything will share data and information now, this is what we call Internet of Things. There is another level of Internet of Things that people are not uh, still aware of, which we call the social Internet of Things. We are now embedding within our things sociability, the ability to communicate among themselves and share information even without us knowing what they are sharing for their sake and for our uh, betterment of our surrounding. Now, this sounds fascinating, 
but there are a lot of companies already that are developing those kind of technologies and at the end our you know our we, we will be engulfed with so many smart small and big things that they will be able to take care of all our needs and they will be able to take care of their needs without us being you know involved in that process for example you know um if so if if if, if a gadget or, or or table doesn't need this, some electricity i don't have to go and you know plug that that table or gadget to the to the wall it will by itself order online some kind of a, a file which is electricity for the next 24 hours for themselves i don't have even to be involved in that process they'll be able to share to trade with each other things so we are at a stage in which we are going to make our surrounding much more intelligent much more capable to take care of themselves and we will not be able to uh, we will not have to just you know invest most of our time of our uh, you know existence on this earth just taking care of our surrounding so that our surrounding will be able to somehow sustain us as a species david thank you for this amazing interview very puzzling and very you know awakened the questions about our future but still thank you very so much. very very interesting thank you also to all of our viewers that saw this interview please don't forget to subscribe to us on all of our social media platforms and especially on our whatsapp group the link will be down here in the description to this video thank you again have a great day